Hey, Chad German here, and today I'm going to go over the codes that associate with um, accessory buildings, the electrical codes. Um, let's pretend this is a shed, and you want to take power from your house to that shed. If you want to have a receptacle at that shed with no light, that's okay. If you want to have a light with no receptacle, according to 210.52G2, wherever we have, whenever we have power, at an accessory building, we have to have a receptacle. So you can't, according to code, have a light with no receptacle or outlet, right? Or outlet in the, in the world of, of code book terms is different than people call on a receptacle and outlet. So I'm gonna stick to receptacle. You have to have a receptacle if you have a light. So you can have one circuit that does both, or um, you can have um, two circuits. Now with that said, you have to go to 225.30, and 225.30 tells us if we have an accessory building, we can have one feeder or one branch circuit that goes there. We can't have multiple, but it does say at the bottom of that code that a multi-wire branch circuit is consi can, can be considered one, one circuit. Now, what that means is I could take a, a two hot conductor with a neutral or a two ungrounded and one grounded conductor and split that up to two separate circuits. I could have my light on one circuit and my receptacle on another. But let's say I want to have a receptacle, I want to have a light, and I want to have a circuit for a chop saw or something of that nature out here. Now I have three circuits and that would violate 225.30 that tells me I can only have one. So then we know we would have to put a sub panel out here. If we put a sub panel out here, that's one feeder that from that subpanel, I could then put multiple branch circuits or pieces of equipment in this, in this building, okay? And I'm gonna take a feeder. Let's take this and go underground and build and put a panel out there. Now, according to uh, 250.32a, if I do that, now I have to take and take that to earth with an electrode. A lot of people will do some ground rods, okay? I have a ground rod there, I have my panel, I can now have more than one or two circuits in this accessory building, but I get asked a lot if it's okay since I put a ground rod here to not pull an equipment ground. Now that was a whole separate video on grounding and bonding. An equipment ground is, a, is gonna help us to have an effective ground fault current path to trip a breaker if there's a fault here on this. We're not gonna be able to trip a breaker if we don't to go to the earth. Now, this is our service. This is our neutral point. This is where our neutral and our, our grounds meet together and bond. And if you don't have that, you're not gonna trip a breaker. This ground rod is not gonna trip a breaker if you don't have an equipment ground here. And you're not gonna make this the neutral point because that's not where the main disconnect is. This would be. So electrical theory is really important when we look at things like this. It seems very simple. I wanna take power out to my shed. Well, us electricians know that the code book is not always very simple, but it's a safety guide. So if we don't do things properly, then we could cause an issue or have an issue. We take this to earth because we want to limit the voltage to ground. This is the same as we do there, according to 250.4A2. Um, uh, okay, so the equipment ground is not the same thing as a grounding electrode going to earth. The equipment ground there is part of uh, an effective ground fault cr uh, um, path back. I think I said that already. And we, we want to be able to trip every, every breaker and we have to, uh, for protection, right? We want to be able to protect this building. So we need that equipment ground going back where it's not protected. I hope these videos help and I hope that uh, this helps anybody that's deciding they want to put power out here. What we don't want to do is have a bunch of circuits come from this house to feed this house or to feed this shed and have no way to turn it off because it's fed, maybe it's fed from a sub panel inside instead of this meter socket. And you come out from that sub panel inside here to feed that, and there would be no way to turn off that breaker if this house is closed. So we have to make sure we protect this little shed, or if it's a, another type of thing like a, you know, an offset garage. Um, that happens a lot where somebody has a, a freestanding garage and they have a lot of equipment in there and sometimes there's a dwelling unit within that garage up on the top. Or they got a bunch of equipment in that garage. You still have to put a panel in there. You can't just take one circuit. In fact, we know that if it's a garage and it has automatic doors, you're also gonna need to have an outlet and you're gonna want lights. You're gonna have to have a sub panel. 
And if you have a sub-panel, you're going to have to pound a ground rod or put an electrode in there. And if you do that, you do have to have an equip equipment ground going back. So anyway, again, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, and I hope th those codes help you. 210.52G2 for the receptacles here. 250.32A for the ground rods. And 225.30 for the one run coming out to the accessory building. Again, thanks guys, and I hope that really helps you out.